Good morning, and uh, thanks for tuning in to another edition of The Big Joel Show. Coming at you live from uh, Washington, D.C. Very exciting day for me today. I've got Hung Lee with me. Uh, he's a senior loan officer. I think sometimes he calls himself a branch manager. I don't know, all kinds of different things. Uh, at Movement Mortgage uh, in New Orleans, which, of course, that's a special place to me because uh, I am a Tulane graduate, so uh, <clears throat> not going to lie. Hung and I have eaten a lot of food uh, in New Orleans. If you uh, follow me on Instagram, I actually have my name. It's just Joel Epstein. Uh, you will see some of that food. But I'm excited to spend some time today with Hung. Uh, he is doing a phenomenal job crushing it uh, in the mortgage business, and he, I think today we'll be able to give you an incredible amount of, I'm going to call them nuggets, and things that you can use uh, in your business. He has organically grown his business from when we met. I think he was doing six to eight uh, purchase loans uh, referred by real estate agents. And this month, he's going. I'm not going to knock on wood because I'm going to shake the camera and they're going to yell at me. But knock on wood, he's going to close 31 units this month. And I don't think are there any refinances in there, hung? No refinances. Uh, 31 purchase units in a market where I'll be honest, I, you know, I talk to loan officers every day and they're kind of complaining right now a little bit. They're giving me some complaints about, oh, the market slowed down and this, that, and the other, and there's no houses for sale. So, Hung, tell us a little bit uh, about you first. Um, uh, how long you've been in the mortgage business? Uh, you know, how you got where you are? Just give me a little background. Uh, I've, I've been in the mortgage business for about 12 years now. Uh, started off in a call center calling trigger leads for refinances. Uh, really didn't have a, a realtor relationship, agent partner relationship until about four years ago. Um, started coaching with you about three and a half. And uh, it's been... So 12 years since. ago is 2006. So you had a little bit of that 80-20 drink from the fire hose, give me your social security number and I'll give you a loan action then that just absolutely grinded to a halt, correct? Correct. And uh, then you made your way into what we call retail lending. Is that a, is that a fair fair statement? So four yes. years ago, 2014, I think we met in December of 2014, if I remember correctly. So, so uh, tell, tell everybody, uh, if you want to just go, go, go big to start with, um, you know, your thoughts – on just just being a loan officer just what's it about before it was about putting loans together um trying to put the best file you can together but you know ever since the business has revolved it's more about building relationships lasting genuine uh just hang out with your friends and uh the business just comes along with it once you uh, gain that trust and deepen the relationship yeah, you know, I I talk about uh, you know all the time that uh, the two best sales techniques are trust and sympathy, and uh, you really can't have either one of them without a relationship. It just it just doesn't work out. And you know, I obviously coach and uh, mentor real estate agents. I have for years, and uh, you know, the ones that uh, sell a lot of real estate are partnered with really good loan officers that aren't just good that you know know how to put loans together, but they, they, they trust them with their clients. They when, when their clients are in there, they trust that that loan officer is going to represent them well. And I only see that happening with a true relationship. Tell me, uh, tell me uh, a little bit about like your day. What's a normal day? You're going to close 31 loans this month. You have uh, two people that work with you, right? Two team members? What, That's what, correct. Okay. So tell me a little bit about your day. Uh, we get up in the morning, uh, start the day off at 4 a.m., hit the gym at 5, get back, do some emails, and uh, get into the office about 7 a.m. Okay. Uh, we have our team meeting once a day about 9.30 and uh, go over the files that we need to, uh, that needs attention. And then uh, – so, so, so you do a daily pipeline drill. Is that what yes. you're saying? And are you That's looking right. at only loans that have contracts, or are you looking at prequals? Tell me what you're looking at when you do that. So I'm only looking at loans that we need uh, attention that has contracts. Okay, so they have a uh, settlement date. Correct. Okay. Uh, all right. Anything that needs uh, more attention than others, and uh, make sure that we're meeting all closing dates. How long does that take? 
usually? Uh, about thirty minutes. About thirty minutes. Okay. Correct. And then you're and then you're done that, and then tell me tell me what you do. Uh, then it's off to have lunches and uh, hang out for the rest of the day. So, so when you say hang out, explain this. You know, in the mortgage business, and, and really it's funny, all sales, all sales is based on, you know, call 100 people, get three people to say maybe and one person to say yes and get 97 people to hang up on you, um, which, which again, really isn't any fun. And I know that you really don't make any phone calls. Um, obviously, I think you made phone calls a long time ago, but you don't make any phone calls now. When you say hang out, uh, you know, what are you actually going to do when you walk out of the office? We're out uh, having lunches, doing happy hours, uh, having dinners and cocktails with uh, just just your friends, your your partners. And these friends are your at this point your real estate agent partners, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, do you do lunch and learns? Uh, once in a while, if I'm asked to, uh, but they rarely happen. Okay. And tell me, uh, tell me about uh, you know you know I call these things B to Bs. Uh, you know, a belly to belly breakfast, lunch, dinner, or drinks. Uh, tell me about that uh, a little bit. Yeah, so we just we just go have a, a a regular lunch. We never, you know, business hardly ever comes up. Uh, it's just more about learning about your, your partners and and their families and and their what what they love to do. So it's really getting to to know each other versus you know you know the business that you're in. Right, which would be which would be extremely transactional. So. Do you, uh, you know, what are all these lines? They say, I love the, I love the one, always ask for the business. And I always say, whoever said always ask for the business never did a lot because uh, asking for the business at the wrong time uh, is usually a loser. I mean, do you, do you walk away from every meeting hitting the, you know, who do you know who, or is there anyone I could prequal? Is that your normal thing or? No, I'd, I'd never do that at all. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have it, have it come naturally versus uh, forcing the situation. So what you're saying basically is radical. So people, people that are going to watch this are going to, are going to be like, wait, what, what do you mean? Like, why, why would you spend an hour or an hour and a half at lunch with an agent and not walk away with anything? Because it's ingrained in them that that lunch is a meeting. It's not a lunch and they need to get something out of it. So what are you trying to get out of that lunch? Uh, just just to make sure that we're gonna get along, uh, that our relationship's gonna last, and 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 I believe that you know relationships that takes a long time to build. If if you could build it in one day, it also could be gone in one day. So it, it's more of a long term. Make sure that they're gonna get along with you, and you're gonna get along with them. Uh, somebody that you're gonna take vacations on, hang out on a daily basis, and and uh, you know treat it like a marriage. So, so that's, that's huge. Everyone listening, take note of that. Relationships are a marathon, not a sprint. You have to be patient. And you just said something great. I don't say that a lot, but I'm going to steal it now that, you know, if you can build a relationship in a day, then it could be gone in a day, uh, which is huge. And, you know, a lot of loan officers have problems with being patient. They can't be patient. They can't wait. And they just jump the gun. The other thing you said was, is that you like them and they like you. You know, the key thing is you said you like them. I can't tell you how many times I talk to loan officers and they're chasing real estate agents that literally they don't like. They're chasing them um, because maybe they do a lot of business, but they don't like them. Like they don't even model match. They don't mesh. You know, there's not, they don't, you know, when they're on the phone, it's forced. It's, there's, they're not having fun. You know, this business is so crazy that if you're not going to have fun doing it, you know, you need to get out. Would you, uh, would you agree with that? I agree. I agree. I remember times when I first started where, when you see somebody call and you just dread picking up the phone call, but now every phone call is pleasant to pick up. So a uh, difference in the business in the last four years. Yeah. Yeah. Huge. And, and you've been building very, what I call organically, meaning your business is not going to go backwards period. It's going to just continue to grow. Now, now, if I asked an agent, um, you know, hey, why do you use, uh, why do you use Hung Lee? What do you think they'd say? I think uh, I, the, the answer I normally get is uh, he, you, you don't seem like you're out there trying to be a vulture. Uh, when, when I see you call, it's not calling because you're asking for a loan or, or if you have a client that you need to get pre It's more about how was your weekend? How you know? How are your kids? How was that soccer game? 
Um, so it's more of a personal relationship than, than, a, than a business one. So, so again, that's a very interesting comment, everybody. So, so listen to what he just said. Agents say, and by the way, this is not a setup. I didn't ask him what he was going to say. Agents say, because you're not a vulture, not even because, oh, you're great, you know what you're doing, and you know how to package loans. That's assumed. You better be good at what you're doing. They said because you're not a vulture, because you're not all over them the way the other loan officers are. So everybody listening or watching, listen to this. This is this is real. This is a guy that's going to close 31 loans this month, 31 loans in June of 2018. Close how many last month? 24? How many? 27. 27 loans last month. How many the month before? Ballpark, if you don't remember. It's okay. 24. 24. This is a guy that's closing purchase loans referred by agent partners. This is exactly how he's doing this. There's no smoke and mirrors here, but there is a lot of patience. And I'll tell you, when I talk to agents, agents will tell me that they've, you know, they've never really had a deep relationship with a loan officer. They never partnered with one. It's always been very transactional. And the agents that do have deep relationships with, with loan officer partners, they tend to sell more houses because everybody is working together. No one's ever working, you know, against each other. So uh, tell me a couple of the things, uh, you know, uh, tell everybody about I think this, this, this coffee thing. Uh, you know, when you first told me about this, I thought it was so interesting. Uh, I thought I had done just about everything, you know, when I was originating loans. Tell, tell, tell everyone a little bit about this coffee hangout thing that you guys have been doing. Yeah, so actually is a, a, one of my best uh, agent partners group that uh, she came up with the idea of uh, doing a coffee huddle at a, a coffee shop. Um, at first, it just started with just us having meetings there and, and, and have coffees, and uh, it didn't work out as we planned at first. So uh, so wait, let me interrupt uh, you. Coffee huddle. Correct. So what does that mean? She was going to go to PJ's or she was going to go to a coffee place in New Orleans, and she was just going to tell people she was there, or she was just literally just going to show up or explain that a little bit. What does that mean? Well, well she did Facebook ads uh, to, to get – uh, regular clients to come there and uh and then just buy everybody coffees but it, it you know we didn't get a big return at first and uh and then all of a sudden we decided we're like so, let's just so, let's so just wait, pay for it. one more second so so you you went at a certain time she told people that she was friends with on facebook that hey i'm gonna be here at nine o'clock stop correct. by and have a cup of coffee that's correct. basically what she did correct okay and you went with her she said hey hon come with me Correct. So, okay. so her, right. her team and I, uh, we're having coffee there. And, and, you know, first few times it didn't pan out like we, we wanted to. And uh, so we're like, let's let's pay for everybody's coffee that comes in the coffee shop. So uh, as that started to happen, the cashier would just send clients over to us or, or just regular, you know, their normal clients over there and just saying that these guys took care of your tab. So we'd, we'd eventually start having people just coming up to us and just talking to us, asking us what we're doing. and Like, and why'd you buy uh, them a cup of coffee? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that, that's just the time for your agent partners to shine at that point. And uh, it's just become a good bonding moment for you and your agent partners just to see the, the looks on people's faces just making, making someone's day. It's just uh, a, a great bond to have. Yeah. That, that's, uh, that, so how long were you there? Two hours? Uh, we usually do uh, between eight and nine a.m. Okay, okay. So, so everyone, just to just to uh, just to encapsulate that, basically, he's calling it a huddle. Uh, the agent let her call it sphere. Her people know, hey, uh, I'm going to be at you know PJ's Coffee at you know on Broad Street or whatever uh, between nine and ten. Stop by and have a cup of coffee with me. Um, and what it turned into is not just people that she knew. She just said, "You know what? Anyone that walks in, I'll I, I got their coffee." <laughs> and then the and then the, the 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 cashier or whatever was saying, "Yeah, they bought your coffee." Kind of like paying it forward, but you're paying it forward for everyone that was walking in, right? And then that caused people to come over and say, well, "Why'd you buy my coffee? What are you guys doing?" And then that created a, a discussion of, "Hey, I sell real estate and I do loans." Is that pretty much how it went? Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it does. And uh. You know, some people might not ask you, but you know, just the you know, just the results that you get from it, um, making making somebody's day just just changes the whole dynamic of your your team. 
So everyone, I'm going to take an aside right now because you're probably seeing, if you're watching this, you're seeing Hung's chair vibrate behind his head. And I just want to let you know that Hung Lee does not like doing things like this. And when they ask him to be on a panel or do anything, he runs. Usually he's hiding somewhere in a locked room. So uh, I appreciate him doing this. That's the nervous tick. Or maybe he's just hungry. Are you hungry? Is that what it is? Yeah. I'm Have both. you been fed today? Okay. Um, so, uh, so, so, everyone, I just want you to know that that's not a small like person back there moving the chair. Um, so, Hung, what would you tell a uh, what would you tell a new loan officer? You know, it's so interesting. Um, I think the average age of loan officers is fifty three right now, and the average age of of real estate agents is fifty seven. I mean, I think you know, you know I've been doing this since nineteen eighty nine. Uh, when I was five, by the way, I got in when I was five, uh, since 1989. And, you know, I think it's the greatest career ever, even selling real estate or, or, or being, a, being a loan officer, you know, doing, doing loans. And young people are just, they're, they're not getting in. What would you tell someone if, they, if they're listening to this, uh, you know, why you would want to do this? And, and then, and then, and I'll help you along with this. And then what would you do? You know, what would you tell them when they first came in? I know it's a oh, multi- yeah, go ahead. This is like probably one of the best hidden careers that a lot of people don't know about. Um, you know, it's 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 flexible how how you want to make it, and you get to enjoy building relationships with people, and 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 it's true genuine relationships that uh, you know, and you, and you get paid for it. Which is, and, uh, and 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 but but you gotta let me say the you know the really the the ugly bad word. You gotta work right. Correct. Like you you, you got to be prepared to work, right? I mean, I tell people all the time, you want to get paid like a surgeon? You got to do a residency for two years in the hospital, seven days a week. Saturday and Sunday is Monday and Tuesday. But if you do it, best career ever. And and I don't know whether people are, are scared to do that, you know, whether this generation is, you know, people that age are scared to do it or they just don't know what to do. Um, but I just... I can't believe, you know, when you look around, you know, you go to these loan officer events. I mean, there's very few young people. Do you, I mean, very few, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, so, so what would you tell them to do coming in? What would you tell them to do? Uh, uh, you know, what would they, what should they be prepared for? Uh, it's, it's going to be a slow, long growth. Um, better have a lot of savings because, you know, this is a, a lot of people take it. This is going to be instant. Uh, I would say it's going to take at least 24 months to uh, to get some you know relationships going and and uh, going to need a lot of savings involved. <laughs> you know uh, uh, that's that's great advice. People get in young, they come in and they think, oh, nothing happened in two months. <clears throat> I'm out. I'm done. <clears throat> Excuse me. So so I'm done. And uh, you know you're right. <clears throat> Patience. It's huge. Nothing is going to happen in two seconds. It doesn't work like that. You know, relationships are a marathon, not a sprint, and that's really what you have to do. So um, tell me about, uh, tell me about, do you do any kind of events with, uh, with, your, with your clients, with people you've done loans for? Do you, tell me a little bit about that. Um, I, I do partner uh, with my, my agent partners, and they, they do client appreciation parties maybe every quarter. Um, they try to do something every month, depending on what month it is, depending if it's Taco Tuesdays or Wine Wednesdays. Uh, they get pretty creative, and, and I just partner up and, and tag along with their events. So it's pretty uh, much because you're partnered with them, you handle the mortgages for most of the people there. So it's a great it's great for you to go and you know and and you're you're getting to see everybody, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. All right. Okay. Great. Um, so. As far as you said, you get up at four, you go to the gym at five, right? Um, and what time does your day normally end on a normal normal week? A normal uh, about, normal day. Sorry. About uh, I usually leave the office about seven. Okay, so you're leaving uh, about seven, um, and uh, you are usually done for the day, right? You're going home. I, I go home, but I'm still on call, so I usually take calls up to about nine o'clock. Um, you mean, then, you mean, uh, you mean you don't turn your phone off at five and have an out of office email that basically says you're unavailable. You mean you don't do that? Never. 
yeah. never have an office, and <laughs> somebody live always picks up the phone no matter what. Yeah. So, so I, I want everybody to hear that. I'm not quite sure who out there is telling loan officers to use out of office email uh, and to turn their phone off and to not be available certain times. Uh, I, I want everyone. To, you're you're hearing a guy that's closing 31 purchase loans this month. Um, who has two people uh, on his team, uh, basically a pipeline manager and uh, what I call sort of a baby hung, a little hung, uh, somebody that uh, can take calls and put files together when he's on the phone doing something else. But he does not turn his phone off. Uh, He is not uh, telling agents or telling partners or borrowers or potential clients via email, I'm not available. Um, there's no reason to ever tell anyone that this doesn't mean you need to take phone calls at 11 PM cause you don't. And if people are calling you then you need to, you know, set them straight the next morning. Um, but the reality of it is, is you're hearing a guy closing 31 loans who is available. And, and if you think that you signed up to be unavailable, you're sorely mistaken. And if you're going to be unavailable, you literally have to earn the right to be unavailable and good loan officers, great loan officers, even when they go away, you know, on vacation or whatever, they usually have a check-in in the morning and a check-in before dinner, something they're calling or they're looking at their email for 10 minutes or whatever it is. And this is a big notion. You know, I hear these mortgage trainers, these coaches all the time. Oh, I work four hours a week. I delegate everything. I, you know, and I would love to really see what their production is or actually what they earn. You know, I mean, you know, they have 27 people doing everything and they're earning, you know, 10 percent of what they should be making or 10 percent of what you make, what someone like you earns. Um, and, uh, you know, again, you know, I'm glad to, I'm glad to hear you say that. I know that, you know, I know that that you do that. Now, do you find that by building the relationships even deeper, people call you less at inopportune times? Yes. Yes. So. And, and they learn to respect your your time, but but you know when you do get a call from them, you know it's something that's urgent, and uh, and it needs to be done right away. So so they 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 know what can wait until the next morning or what needs to be done right at this moment. So uh, we are you know we earn the respect from each other and 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 um and they respect that. So 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 everybody everybody listen to that. Okay, this is, this is important. If you're doing your job right and you're building relationships correctly. Um, you're not going to get phone calls till 11 o'clock at night on Saturday night. It's not going to happen because you're doing business with people that you, you have a genuine friendship with. And you're, that person is not going to call you at 11 o'clock at night unless, unless they, they, they really, really need you. And, and you're okay to take that call because they have a reload coming in from Afghanistan on, you know, for a 12-hour window. And they call and they apologize. And they say, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry. You know, and you say, of course, let's go. Come on. You know, because they really needed to do that. They're not just calling at 11 because they've got nothing else to do. And, uh, you know, I, loan officers get kind of confused with this all the time. Um, and uh, I'm glad to uh, I'm glad to I'm glad to hear you say that. So um, what are you projecting? I know you've already made President's Club for your for your company this year. Yes. Um, so what are you projecting this year uh, for units? Uh, I think we're going to be upwards of 275. OK. And last year was. 222. 222. And the year before? Uh, 195. Okay, so everyone hear that. Listen, 195, 222, we'll even call 270. It's fine. Okay? Let that sink in for a second. That's slow, controlled growth. That's growth by building referral partnerships with people that you like and that actually like you. And as their business grows your business grows together. And what I find all the time with really good loan officers, and really good real estate agents is their business always grow together because they're both pushing the same way. And the fact that you're doing a great job is actually helping them get more referrals because their people are turning around and say, oh, thank you so much for referring me. That guy hung Lee, he was awesome. Wow, that was great. You know, and they're happy. And if they're happy, they're going to think about their agent more. Their agent's going to get more referrals. Their agent's going to sell more house, houses, and you're going to do more loans. Period. Do you agree with that? I, I 100% agree. 
Yeah. So, um, what else? What else can you share with us uh, that you haven't shared? I, obviously, we can all tell you're not a big talker. What else? What else can you uh, can can you share with us that you think people would love to hear? You know, when people call you, I know you get calls all the time. I think right now, Hung is number three in his company for units. And by the way, units are the only thing I look at. I don't know where you're at in volume. What are you number ten or eleven or something like that in volume? Maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because you can't control, you know, your volume usually hung is in New Orleans. That's a lower average loan amount. Um, and I always I always judge or look at loan officers based on units. Uh, also, units bring more clients. More clients always bring more loans. What would you, you know, give me a couple of nuggets, um, good takeaways for loan officers listening. Maybe they're struggling. Maybe they, they just can't figure it out. They're, they can't get past two loans a month. Um, I, what, what I look is for, for every loan that you ever close, you have two people that you could impress on there, right? So both agents and, and if you do a good job, um, your biggest fans are your two agents. And if, if you can become good friends with them, you know, that's, that's, they'll, they'll keep referring you over and over to, to more agent partners that you can, and, uh, that you can work with. So most of my partners that I work with now, they were actually referrals from different partners that I, I never reached out to. So it's just it, it grew organically and uh, it's been a it's, it's been a great ride. So so uh, everyone just I want to just rephrase that for every transaction you do or every loan you do, you have two people that you can impress. Both the listing agent and the selling agent, I would argue, Hung, I would say you have three because you actually have the borrower, too. Correct. You know, so, so you have three, but I know where you're going with the two. Um, and, uh, you know. Uh, taking the time to impress them is goes really, really, really far. You know, we don't have enough time today to go into my whole, you know what I do with the whole listing agent thing. Um, but, but it is amazing how many loan officers are even combative with those people. Um, in it's one of the stupidest things, you know, I've, I've ever seen loan officers do literally being combative, um, uh, with agents, uh, you know, in the middle of a transaction, but it sort of goes completely against um, everything that you're saying. And again, that's a broad nugget, but that's really the core of everything, you know, that you need to do to really organically uh, grow your business. Hey, Hung, before uh, before we go, I always have to ask this because everybody knows me. Uh, what's your favorite food? Favorite food is uh I'm I'm going with Vietnamese. Vietnamese, but like, what kind, what kind? Come on, you're 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 you know. Um, that's a hard question because I, I like all of it. It's, it's it's difficult. I could have every single day, and, uh, and you know, it's I'll something give you, that I'll give I'll give you a little plug. This guy is Fa Foodie on Instagram. <laughs> that's P H O P H O O D I E Fa Foodie. By the way, you people think it's Fo Foodie, it's Fa. Fafudi, do you want to see what this guy eats all the time? Because right now he's lying because he doesn't just eat Vietnamese food all the time. I saw a dry-aged ribeye up in smoke yesterday. Did that thing go in the sous vide? Oh, yeah, three hours on the sous vide. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, uh, well, Hung, thank you so much uh, for your time today. I know you did not want to do this. I know you hate stuff like this. You're the quiet guy in the corner. Um, but uh, I really appreciate you coming on the Big Joel Show, and I know we talked about a lot of cool things that uh, loan officers have great takeaways from. So uh, enjoy uh, whatever you're about to eat right now, and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you.